All right. Well, thanks, everyone, um, and, and good morning. I'm Bill Manel. I am <coughs> HPC for uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And today I want to um, give you an update on what's going on at Hewlett Packard Enterprise relative to HPC. Now, a couple of my objectives of the, the presentation here is to have you leave with the fact that HPC is very important for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We're obviously a large company, about 50 billion right now, uh, and have a lot of other things we do, uh, but HPC is very important to us. And we're also investing in it very highly as we go forward. So those are a couple of things that I want you to take away from this presentation. And so as a, as a large corporation, we have uh, a focus area that we have. And this is, it essentially is preparing our customers for what a, a term we call, coined called the new style of IT. And the new style of IT is all about uh, big data, enabling employees in all kinds of different ways in all kinds of different areas and times, being able to use your data to make decisions, having a hybrid type environment so that you can move very quickly between on-premise to the cloud and back and forth. And so we have a set of what we call transformations that are directed to, for the most part, IT uh, individuals or IT departments within corporations. And the transformations are on the left side here. So. Uh, first transformation is about having a hybrid infrastructure, so essentially a very flexible infrastructure that can adapt very quickly, that can be on-prem, in the cloud, can expand or contract as, as needs arise. And as we, we were just talking about with, with Bob's presentation, uh, security, very important for corporations. So we offer uh, solutions to, to customers around security. It is something that it's important to them, obviously, as well. Finally, in empowering the data-driven organization, this is really where we see HPC residing in. So HPC is really around analyzing your data, getting value from that data, generating data that you can then use to make decisions, so simulation, modeling, these sorts of things, big data analytics as well. And then the final transformation is around enabling workplace productivity. So enabling workers to have access to the tools and the and the capabilities that they need where and when they need it 24 by 7, 365 days a year. And so the interesting thing is as you go forward and you look at this market, you see the impact of the idea economy and how quickly things are changing. And so industries are, are literally being born uh, overnight and other industries are being significantly impacted. So if you look at uh, a great example and, and a customer of ours is Uber. So Uber obviously has has uh, you know, come out of nowhere and has, has literally transformed uh, the industry of, of personal transportation. So, so before, typically, I was just traveling with someone last week in the Bay Area. Uh, I, of course, uh, as a traditionalist, rented a car. Uh, he uh, instead said, you know, cars are hard to fuss with. Why bother? I'll just do an Uber, pick me up at my door, drop me off at the airport, pick me up at the, uh, at the terminal. Basically, I don't have to go to the you know, out, uh, off-premise uh, rental car. So, so you're seeing that transformation as we go forward. They're obviously a company totally wired in. Uh, you communicate them with your, your mobile phone. So they're, they're always available to you from that standpoint. Um, so in a lot of these things, as we, as we see, we're seeing companies create, create differentiated products. So Uber's a great example there. Uh, moving to uh, operational efficiency, so getting better efficiency, improving the customer experience, I recently was up in Detroit and I talked to uh, one of the, one of the uh, large automotive companies uh, and what they said is they're actually changing how they view, view themselves, not as much as a, a maker of automobiles, but actually as a creator of a driving experience. So the driving experience uh, requires the interchange of data on a real-time basis. So again, the way uh, companies are changing their user and customer experience going forward. Obviously, intelligence and IoT, so how do you get value out of that data? Um, and finally, uh, workplace productivity as well, as I've mentioned before. And so, you know, again, a lot of companies are doing sort of the traditional things in HPC simulation modeling. Um, they're also looking at uh, how do they analyze this, this machine data that's coming in, so more and more lots of sensors out there that, that can be managed and trying to both manage it and, and get value from it as well as backing it up and storing it as well. And so from an HPE perspective, as I, I said previously, HPC is very important. In fact, about a, about a year and a half ago, the uh, Hewlett-Packard created a, a global business unit 
that specifically focus on HPC. And so as you can see in this, this chart here, this is our, our particular compute strategy across our corporation. So we have a number of, of different segments, we call them, of which HPC is one, and it's at the same level as all the other segments. So we have segments on the left focused more on core enterprise, our mission critical segment um, that's focused on stock exchanges, banks, and these sorts of things. In the massive compute area, that's where we have HPC, and also in the deep analytics is where we bring in some of our big data solutions. And we have things like IoT, so we've launched a variety of IoT products this past year, extreme scale products, and also our OEM uh, segment that brings together a lot of products across the portfolio into specific solutions for customers and the financial services industry, the, uh, uh, the medical equipment industry, and so forth and so on. And for each of these segments, generally, we have a server line that's focused on it. And so in my particular segment and also in the big data segment as well, we have our HP Apollo line that we launched a couple years ago. So op workload optimized products specifically for HPC and big data, and also our Moonshot product as well. Um, so optimized for big data, for workplace productivity, um, and also for media as well. So, so again, as you can see, HPC sits in the same same line as our other products and also has a specific focus area in terms of the HP Apollo product. And so this is what I call my bullseye diagram. This is basically the strategy that I have for my particular business unit. So at the very center, it's all around optimized hardware and software. So again, this is the Apollo product line. So we'll always be focused on getting the best hardware out in customer hands during doing HPC type workloads. Around the outside, we started to add solutions. And in, when we work with solutions, we have to work with partners. So we've developed a partner ecosystem as we go forward to allow us to build solutions specifically for verticals. So verticals like financial services, life sciences, and these are areas that we focused in. And then finally, around the outside, building advisory services. So helping you understand what kind of solutions that you need, what would be the right configuration for them, and getting them up and running in, in the, uh, the most effective way forward. And so here's our portfolio that we have. And I talked about this um, in a number of venues, including I was here uh, in Tucson um, uh, back in April or May, whatever that, that was. Um, but again, we focus a lot on specific vertical segments, so whether you're energy, whether you're manufacturing, whether you're, you're financial services, uh, in the area of HPC, mobility, and also big data. And then we have a variety of portfolios. So over here on the left is our Apollo 8000, heavily focused on the supercomputing side of the house. So water-cooled uh, for uh, getting the, the optimal amount of performance per rack in a server for, from HPE. We introduced the Apollo 6500, which is specifically focused on GPU computing. Um, so we have a number of customers, especially those in the in the uh, cloud service provider space that are, that are using them for deep learning type applications. For those customers for who, who need uh, a large number of racks, so hundreds to thousands of servers in a air-cooled environment, we have the Apollo 6000. The Apollo 2000 is a product for a lot of customers that, that either have smaller um, type of um, uh, requirements or maybe they want to be able to have a lot of flexibility so they can bring in their own switch infrastructure um, and have a lot of options and flexibility. Fits in the standard 19-inch rack, very standard IT type format using very standard IT type tools. Moonshot is a product specifically focused for a number of, of particular workloads in media, in, uh, in mobility, and also big data. And then finally, the Apollo 4000 product is focused on big data workloads. So it's really a, a storage server uh, for HPC storage, for Hadoop, and also for object storage as well. And so one of the things we started a lot of work on, and this is one of the investment areas, is in our software environment. Um, so if you had gone back 10 years ago or so, we had, had a pretty rigorous software environment. You know, things changed and we went away from that, but we started to reinvest in that over time. And we did launch uh, our own uh, software uh, environment that we support. So in the past, we were much more oriented toward, you know, we just support anything. Just pick what you want and, and it'll run on our systems. But now we actually have a blessed software environment that we recommend uh, for particular customers. It has a combination of, of uh, open source uh, solutions as well as some of our own solutions in that particular software stack. But we'll support that whole software stack on our particular platform. 
And there's a number of components to that. One is uh, the our systems management, our ILO systems management, which goes across all of our platforms. So that forms the basis of, of uh, our software stack. We then have our, our cluster management, uh, cluster management utility, or CMU, is a core to that, allowing you to set up and manage uh, HPC clusters. And finally, at the application level, we, we have a number of, of workload management libraries and so forth that, that we provide as part of our software stack. And a lot of this comes either from the open source or from, from uh, our partner vendors. And again, the customer value here is to, is to really accelerate um, your, your ability to get up to speed quickly. Now, one of our success stories over the years was at Pittsburgh Supercomputing. Um, so we had an Intel Alliance, uh, and so have an Intel Alliance, actually. And this was one of our first uh, success stories here, where we implemented a variety of, of, of different solutions across the HPE portfolio, what I mentioned before, out of our mission critical, out of our ProLiant line, also out of our Apollo line, to serve a variety of customer needs and tied it all together with Intel, with uh, Pittsburgh Supercomputing, to create a, a very flexible environment to serve a variety of different users. And so with the breadth of our portfolio, we were able to provide not only more traditional HPC type applications, but also more um, uh, HPDA type capabilities as well. And in the line of continued investment, I mentioned the HPC software environment that we launched at ISC in June. We also extended our portfolio and brought in new technologies across the Apollo line, whether it's Intel Omnipath uh, fabric, whether it's the, the latest EDR fabric from Mellanox, and also five processors as well, we brought more broadly into the portfolio. And then we also uh, launched another work, uh, workload optimized solution around ANSYS. Um, so we, we work with ANSYS to optimize a particular solution so there are reference architectures available for customers doing um, those types of uh, computer-aided engineering tasks as well. And so as we go forward in time, you'll see, if you went back a few years, we were really heavily focused on optimizing around a particular system, making sure that a particular 2U box had the, the best performance possible and the, the, uh, the the lowest power requirements and those sorts of things as well. And then over time, we've moved much more into a rack optimized space. So most of the Apollo line is actually rack optimized. So we actually really focus on getting the, uh, the best performance, the, the lowest power and best cooling on a rack level. And now we're moving more and more toward data center optimized. So with our software stack allowing you to optimize the resources you have within the data center, you'll hear more of that from HPE uh, over this year as we bring in new technologies from a composability standpoint. And then as we move forward, uh, in cooperation with our Hewlett Packard Enterprise Labs community, we've been working on the next generation of compute hardware, which is called the machine. Uh, this is a, a uh, memory-centric uh, architecture, and, and uh, uh, my team is actually the interface for for Hewlett Packard uh, Labs in bringing that technology down. So we'll be bringing that technology down over time into the Apollo line over the next few years as well. And finally, in the area of uh, large investment, we, we actually uh, did uh, uh, announce the fact that we would be purchasing uh, SGI. Um, so um, this was about a month ago or so. Um, we're well into that acquisition. You can sort of read some of the details. They were available in a press release as well. Uh, but basically, what we did here is to, to bring in a company that was uh, uh, an HPC uh, pure play and bring it into the company to allow us to accelerate some of the things we wanted to do in terms of our capabilities in software, our capabilities in applications, and the capabilities in some of our higher end um, uh, supercomputing capabilities. Uh, SGI is for the top 25. That's an area that we want to focus on. So, you know, we signed, we're going to sign the check soon when the deal closes, but that allowed us to bring a lot of technology very quickly into our company. Um, I was an SGI veteran for a long period of time, so, so the conclusion of uh, bringing all my folks home again. Uh, but, um, you know, again, this allows us to uh, really amp up and, and increase our capabilities very quickly. So we add about 1,100 employees uh, to that base as well. This brings in another, another couple hundred some odd engineers into my organization uh, to do work here as well. And there's also technology they have on the mission critical side that will feed into things like our Superdome product as well as 
uh, people that can work with the HP labs on the machine and those sorts of things as we go forward. Um, and then finally, this talks a little, that's pretty much a review of what we did. You know, we brought in uh, portfolio technical innovation people um, and also investment protection for those customers that are that are on SGI gear right now. And that's all I've got. I've got uh, zero minutes for questions. I guess we've got a couple of questions. Any questions from folks? All right, great. Well, thank you very much.